Okay, well, for those of you just joining because I relaunched the cast, I massively screwed up something and I don't know what it was because things were not moving smoothly on the stream at all. Hopefully we got it all fixed up. We'll be able to move on with our lives as if nothing else has happened. So... I'm just going to reintroduce this whole thing. This is Roanoke Abyss. We've got Bloodier and Zlow up here. 2054 and 2062 ladder rank, respectively. Very evenly matched. This is a traditional Cybern versus UEF matchup. After this, we're going to be playing a game on a big Navy map that is not Roanoke Abyss because I know there's a ton of people who absolutely hate... Um, Roanoke Abyss. So we're just going to ignore that completely and uh, move on to a different map. Let me make sure I actually have this one titled correctly. Yes. Okay. So, today has apparently been nothing but one huge technical difficulty anyway, but hopefully we'll get over it. Um, yeah. So, Bloatier, Cybrain, he is going first land, second air, spreading out all over his island, picking up as many rocks as he can with that manual reclaim because manual reclaim is a beautiful thing that we should all participate in as a group activity. On the south side, we've got Zlow. He is also going for second air. He is throwing down a bunch of power generators in what we will soon see is a configuration for three air factories because we got about two and a half or three minutes into this game before it blew up in our faces. And these guys are basically taking normal expansion routes. We've got engineers moving off to the sides in a couple of cases. We have an ACU moving over to the island just to ensure that that thing gets taken without a hitch and long, long Cues. We've got a single engineer here moving out to the side islands, going to pick up both of those, two mass extractors, tons of manual reclaim with a single engineer, and then the kind of the same thing going on for Bloodier. Here he is dropping all that manual reclaim, two islands with that one, and two islands with this engineer, radar and point defense going down on the outside edge. So Bloodier, right off the bat, is making a play for better than half map control. He's going to try to go for that aggressive punch, and maybe he can hold it, and maybe he can't. We'll just have to see. Looks like we do have interceptors coming out first for Zlo, probably anticipating what could have been an early bomber, but is not from Bloodier. Bloodier went first transport. I'm going to go ahead and load up three engineers, move off to the left, drop three for a factory over here, and move his ACU over for a factory on the right side island. So it looks like... Blo uh, Blodeer is setting up for aggressive expansion and Zlo is setting up to secure and hold his property. Perhaps he is wanting them to respect his authority. It's funny when a stream launches that badly, <laughs> how scatterbrained it makes everything because it's like psyching out about stuff that is not an issue because you are being overly aware of what's going on. Hopefully I can get my keep my tongue untied and get this game rolled out for you guys fairly effectively. That T1 bomber picked the wrong island to go to because that is the island that the engineer is headed towards. One bomber is not going to do much good versus the build power and HP of an ACU. If it would have gone this way, probably could have knocked out a couple of those engineers and delayed those mass extractors going down for a few seconds but you know what hindsight's 2020 he has no idea what's going on at this moment although he does have a scout over here he will be able to pick off those that is going to be nice two engineers dropping probably a little bit of assistance for that ACU here comes the bomb and bam slow taking out two engineers in the very early reach for that island Back at home, looks like he's already got a T2 mass extractor getting that early eco in. Looks like 33 mass per tick versus 37-ish. So that is due to the fact that Bloodier has expanded more aggressively. So we've got a T2 mass extractor versus a superior number of T1s. And look at there, Bloodier has also got himself a T2. Nice shiny T2 max, tons and tons of T1 power. Good lord. That is the ideal candidate for a T1 bomber. If that guy right there was hitting this right here, he could probably take out six P-Gens, maybe seven, in a couple of passes. And there's another bomber out here as well. 
going to try to do a little damage on that mass extractor. It'd be nice to see him take out that engineer before he claims the rest of it, but alas, it is not meant to be. So we've already got Navy in the water. Bloedier has got three frigates out and working on building some more. Zlow doubling down on his air. He's up to four factories now with kind of a minimal power build, actually, considering what he is doing. Bloedier up here on the north, one air factory still. Not even any assistance on it. And he is going for assisted naval factories. Already dropped another frigate in the water for a total of four, and he is expanding towards the south side. This is going to be a problem for Zlo, because frigates can reach onto the land with their guns. They're going to be able to take out all four of those mass extractors on the outside edges and then they do have their own anti-air so it's going to act as an air denial tool near those islands and air is the only tool that Zlow has at his disposal. This is kind of the problem with air versus navy because air moves more quickly than navy does and in, number, in numbers air seems to do really well versus navy but Mass for mass, Navy is going to be more efficient. So if Zlo continues down this path, he is going to see a good return on his early air. But once that first cruiser drops in the water for Bloedir, that is going to start backtracking really, really quickly. But Zlo is doing fairly well for himself. He's dropping a tank on each of these islands in order to knock out the engineers that are located there. Actually, really nice play. And then on the left and right, see a frigate knocking out a mass extractor there, and then frigates harassing this island as well. So there's just no navy to respond, none whatsoever. Zlo is getting the T2 upgrade on his ACU. Kind of an odd choice, but uh, it is his own to make, so he is going to be able to get down T2 PGENs. There it is right there. Minimalistic T1 power build rolling straight into the concentrated power production of a T2 generator. And there goes the bomber. Frigates with that awesome little bit of anti-air. I wonder if that, is that going to drop on the mainland? Maybe? No? No, it's going to fly directly over the frigate and take a lot of damage. That sounds like a good plan. <laughs> and we'll be able to drop that artillery off at an island where there is actually nothing to kill. Maybe he'll fly over it. Nope, he is going to drop. And there goes the interceptors to catch up to him. We've got quite the cloud of interceptors down here for Zlo, who is moving into a T2 air factory. That means he can get torpedo bombers up, possibly gunships. Actually, gunships would be a really good option here because he could carry units from point A to point B with his gunships, one of those awesome UEF traits. So, ah, there's a T2 land factory as well see what he's going to build with that. We do have the T2 Engineer out. Be able to get some defenses down on the island. I'm wondering if he's going to go hover tanks. Because hover tanks, to me, would seem like the natural reaction to what's going on here. Zlo is rapidly losing map control, but he still has superior economy. Because basically he's building cheap air and teching up his mexes. While Bloedir is building expensive naval units and expanding his map control. So for now at least, Zlo is going to hold a superior economy. I think if I would venture a guess, which uh, yeah, lowly little me, 1400 rank, guessing at what a 2000 player is doing. My bet here would be that he is going for the T2 air to hold just enough control of the map to get T3 Navy in the water with a superior eco. Because if UEF T3 Navy gets in the water, Cybern is screwed. But uh, this is looking more and more sketchy as it goes on. We've already got the T2 factory, and there is the cruiser at 12 minutes and 50 seconds starting production. So it's going to be a couple minutes before it comes out. But this is going to be difficult for Zlow to hold. He does have hover tanks out, so that is going to let him get a little bit of control back out here in the island groupings. And then, actually, Pillar directly engaging a frigate there. It's interesting, the T1 Navy is roughly equivalent to T2 land, and then uh, T2 Navy to T3 land, and T3 Navy to experimentals. It kind of steps up the ladder that way. And uh, that frigate is going to dispatch the T2 tank quite handily, but it is a more expensive unit, so that is understandable. 
Group of six frigates over there. Quite a respectable amount of anti-air there. You don't want to send a single gunship or two gunships after that because they will die. You need to send a large group of gunships, and it looks like a large group of gunships is exactly what we have down here on this island. There's a single one kind of... Uh, uh, nope, he is going to go down to the Salem anti-air. Also quite respectable. And there we go, moving. That is already going to be 22... T2 gunships for Zlow, and none for Bloedir. And that's going to be 31 interceptors versus 50, basically. Seven out of fuel, they're not going to be able to get there in time. So, yeah, all-in airplay for Zlow. That is not something you see every day. We do have a triad down here for defense, and that would be Wagner's. Dipping into the water, crossing over, and landing on the island to harass those expansions. Well played by Bloedir. And still, those T2 gunships just kind of chilling out there. They really need to engage this because right now, this many gunships could kill all of that navy. But once that cruiser comes in, it's going to be a much closer fight. Yet another group of about 10 gunships moving in. That's going to be 30-ish there. Good lord, the gunships. Exactly 30. So many. And the Wagner and Destroyer are doing terrifying things to Zlo's economy, but still pulling 124 to 121. So, you know, it can't be affecting him that much. T2 gunships committing, a couple of them falling out of the air. You can see how strong that cruiser anti air fire is. Another two going down, losing four gunships from his bunch just to kill one cruiser. And now he's going to be able to wipe out those destroyers, though. And he's going to lose a few gunships as a meat shield. It's funny how easily you can win air when there are combat units in the mix because Bloedir is actually far outstripping Zlo's air production at the moment. That was a lot of inter interceptors coming online in just a short amount of time. But uh, they're going to lose out because they're wasting fire on the T2 gunships while the other interceptors are shredding them. Uh, <laughs> Cyber and Cruiser can barely kill patrolling Entis. You know, that's true because it has slow projectile speeds, but the Cyber Cruiser, if you're killing beefy units like T2, T3 gunships, something like that, and slower moving air units, the Cyber uh, Cruiser actually has one of the highest DPS stats for anti any of the anti air units. So it can knock out T2, T3 gunships even some T2 torpedo bombers. It sucks versus fast air units though. Solaces, uh, overflying ASF, things like that. The Cybern Cruiser does not get a well... I cannot talk tonight. Cybern Cruiser does not do well against at all. Um, but you gotta consider the Cybern Frigates and destroyers also have beastly anti-air. So the entire cyber navy comes together as a whole to have a ton of anti-air capability. All right, the rating is actually going really, really well for Zlow. He is knocking out mass extractors left and right, killing off the power generators on that expansion. He's got gunships down this side, resecured his hold on that. He's, there is a cruiser right here, which he's going to have to mass up, which he is right there. You've got to mass up a bunch of gunships to deal with that. He is going to lose a T2 mass extractor, I think, over it. But, uh, yeah, overall, we're looking at 195... Well, 130 plus reclaim. I hate the reclaim tick bumps. Um, 130 versus Bloedir with 110. So 20 higher, but it looks like Bloedir is biting into some reclaim here and there. So he is not going to fall behind with that kind of lead for Zlo. We've got 12,000 reclaimed for Zlo and 10,000 for Bloedir. So overall, I'd say this game is fairly close with a good bit of eco advantage towards Zlo. The problem is Zlo does not have sufficient build power to put that into Navy, which is what he needs to start doing very, very soon, because I think he's about at the breaking point of what he can do with T2 gunships. Also, you have to remember, the more he pours into T2 gunships, the less he can put into interceptors. And interceptors is something that Bloedir has in spades. Look at this, 72 interceptors 
versus a whopping 25 for Zlo. So Zlo has just lost air control. He does have some hover tanks left, and he has not lost his expansions yet, but he has got to get in the water right now. The airplay was an interesting one, but it has overstayed its welcome. And there goes the last of the interceptors. All right, we've got Wagner's headed towards the shore. This is hilarious. Look, Wagner's just kind of chilling under the water, sitting there. Nothing you can do to me. You can't touch me. And the hover tank's just going right over the top. Neither one can fight the other, and then when they hit the landfall, you don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Because it's like opposite sides of the same coin. There's the cruiser just absolutely decimating the numbers of gunships, of which there are still so many. Why are there so many gunships when there are all those interceptors right there? There should not be that many. Why are you doing this to yourself, Bloodier? And here come the Wagners, about to make landfall. Unfortunately, there is an ACU right there with the gun upgrade and T2. So he is going to be able to overcharge those pretty dang easily if yep there we go we do have energy storage there all right Zlo I know you like building mass storage there you go buddy busy busy bee building up his mexes and then uh, bam Wagner in the face the riptides have hit shore on the left hand side unfortunately not any point defense left but it is being built by quite a few engineers with a lot more assisting this T2HQ pushing out the Wagners as fast as they can come to deal with these Riptides. But the Riptides did do a fair little bit of damage. That is going to be a kind of a mass donation overall, I think. But hey, any harassment is good harassment as long as you're not feeding your opponent a Monkey Lord. Is this finally... We got a T2 Sonar going down. Yes! That means there's a Naval Factory. Where is the build power to feed the naval factory? That is my question. Still gunships coming out. Still everything assisting the air factory. So many scouts. Well, at least he'll know what's going on. He does have very good intel. Very respectable intel. Bloodier, not really sure... It's been a while since he's been over that portion of the map. It looks like Bloodier is pulling two... That's weird. That is a very strange number running there. All right, he is pulling about 180-ish. And Zlow, on the other hand, pulling 198 plus a fair chunk of reclaim. We've got 19,000 reclaim for Zlow and 21 for Bloodier. Um, obviously, Bloodier is pushing across the map at the moment, so he is going to be getting the reclaim fields. Here comes the T1 engineers getting on that factory upgrade. T2 to T3 shift, and the cruiser fire is horrendous. Knocking out those engineers bit by bit as they're streaming in. Don't even get a chance to start assisting the factory, and they're falling down. But the gunships have returned once again. There you go. Focus fire the cruisers. Eliminate that anti-air. And that only leaves frigates. There's another cruiser coming off the back. This is like all cruisers. And there's some gunships coming in for Bloodier as well. The map is looking very, very red at the moment. And that is not a good thing to have happen when you are blue. 217 versus 145 income at the moment. Actually got two T3 mechs down. Kind of impressive and building drones i'm not sure why he's building drones this is this is foreign to me not gonna lie but he does have a battle cruiser halfway built and that will put hope in your heart if you're a uef player with t2 cyber and closing in because that battle cruiser and a shield is going to be able to deal with all of this it's not even going to be a problem anymore all right well, second battle cruiser. I suppose you don't necessarily need a shield. He is going to need some form of anti-air though, because at the moment, Bloodier has won air so hard that uh, it's hard to see anything coming back from that. Looks like he's got about 20 of his own gunships. 21, actually. And a big old wad of interceptors versus not much for Zlo. That is the scientific measurement of how much air Zlo has. 
That battle cruiser though is going to knock out the cruisers that are harassing his build power. He does have a second cruiser out, but here comes the gunships. Oh no, there's gunships on my boat. Ugh, that is disheartening. I was, I was thinking that there might be a chance that those cruisers would turn it around and just look at the interceptors and look at the gunships and look at, oh my goodness. There's the cruiser finally, but it is too little too late. The second battle cruiser is going to go down, and I think that is going to be the end of Zlow. Mark B, I believe he's building drones because he hopes they will not be hit by the ship's guns. However, they can be hit by fighters. Yes, and the anti-air on the frigates and destroyers and cruisers and everything else. So, really, I don't know. Meh. It, it, it was a losing proposition either way because either your engineers are going to get hit by all the cruisers' main guns or your drones are going to get hit by the cruisers' anti-air, which actually... Yeah, the anti-air has almost the same range as the deck guns. And now we get to watch the slow grinding of Zlow into a pulp. Just FYI, Bloatier has been on one of the most aggressive ladder runs I have ever seen recently. I was kind of glancing through today on the FAF client. If you just type in 2000 rank range and search it to see what replays are there, probably a good third of the available replays were Bloodier's ladder matches. Like, I don't know what on earth is going on, but <laughs> he is grinding ladders so hard right now. Impressive win ratio as well. Alrighty, that was an interesting one versus one. And I say that because what we just watched was 100% all in on early air versus Navy Rush. And the air wins in the early game because it's so fast. You can hit places, you can raid, you can hit one or two naval units at a time on different sides of the map. But over time, as the Navy builds up, the anti-air is just too strong. Pretty much on any... Um, on any of the navies, even if you are cyber and you have the crappy cruisers. Yes, Zlow did waste mass that game. Um, and that was pretty much a build power problem, which I think I did mention a couple of times. Just did not have enough build power anywhere. Um, but that, I, I don't know if that could be avoided with a build like that. Um, unless you just throw down five or six T1 land factories, strictly building engineers to pour into the water to build your navy. Anyway, it did not happen. What we see here is the conclusion that did well played, Bloodier. Um, Yeah, proving Cybran dominance once again. No, not really. Just a solid Navy play and slowly taking over the map, even in the face of hordes and swarms and countless gunships, however many you want to use to describe. All right, I'm going to quit out of this. Let me see if I can do this without breaking my stream setup. We're going to... This is actually what I'm using right now. I had some people asking me about dual screen because um, the, the dual screen is broken on Windows 10 on my machine. I don't know what it is about my hardware setup, but I cannot use dual screens. So what I did was there is a mod put out by Coding Squirrel and a script put out by Tatsu that fakes full screen on a window that stretched over both of my monitors and then I use the split screen um, inherent to subcom and that mod moves the UI over so when I stretch my screen back out everything lines up pretty dang cool thing huge thanks to coding squirrel and tatsu and the guy cannot remember who it was that told me about it that I needed to start using it since my dual screen was broken but anyway that's what I've been doing to get this whole thing to work. Hope you guys are enjoying it because I even get the mini map in the screen in the streams now, which was not happening before. So coolio on that. All right, let's host a game. Let's not host a Black Ops game. Although I'm sure there are some people who would absolutely love me to do that. We're not going to do it right now. All right, host it up. 
We're going to do, what are we going to do today? We're going to do 600 to 1600. Give it a thousand rank range. And I saw a map here. Was it? Yes, the Barrier Islands. This is going to be 100% Navy. I've never played on this before. I've never seen it played before. I saw it hosted in a lobby earlier, and I want to play with some boats today. So that is what we're going to do. We are going to float our little boats across the sea and hopefully have a good slug fest in the middle. <laughs> what? How am I missing the map if I'm the one that hosted it? Okay, let's make use of our wonderful map vault here. Uh, let's go to the barrier islands. Is this a map that does not exist? What is this madness? Let's go back to find games and see what that was called. Barrier Islands, spelled exactly like I spelled it. Did someone delete the map off of the client? Let me use correct capitalization and see if it gets anything. Well, that's annoying. Oh well, I still want to play Navy. Let's pick a map. Search Barrier. Someone telling me. Okay, let me, I'll, I'll try it. Barrier. Ah, there we go. Um, let's see. Seems you already have the map. Okay, so let me, let's do this one. 4v4, not the rebalanced. No, Raptor Jesus, we are not playing your Navy map. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Let's get into this once again. I can't remember the name of it, but I know which map you're, which map you're talking about. Hold on. Stella Maris. Is that it? Yes. I have it blocked from my mind because of the terrible memories. Was there any significant difference on this one? Not too terribly much. The textures look better on the other one. Let's see if I can load it up in here. Ah, there it is. Okay, we're going to play with this one. Doop -doop. <clears throat> the other curiosity on my setup. I actually have a pop-out tab with the YouTube chat in it, which is what I use to pull and put that on the screen. I actually had a lot of fun with that one because I had to change the colors on the background and things and stuffs. There's a YouTube tutorial for everything, including CSS scripts. It's actually quite incredible. You can do pretty much anything you want to. All right, we're going to do... Uh, whoops, we need to do top versus bottom. There we go. Top versus bottom, and we're going to do Group randoms. Group I'm going to go random faction, because I am not going to choose. Group Let's do random, we need to do assassination. Share till death. Yes, let's do that. Okay. Nobody die. Oh, oh, I do not want equilibrium mod. Turn that crap off. There we go. Um, it was on earlier. I jumped to get in a game with it hosted, and ugh. I think a facepalm adequately describes what went on in that game. Um, Raptor Jesus is missing the map. Have you downloaded it, my friend? Equilibrium mod is Ithilus Quo attempting to rebalance Forged Alliance mathematically. Like, 
every single unit statistic and cost is derived from a percentage difference. And then there is no HP jump with veterancy and there's new veterancy regen numbers and a bunch of other stuff that he changed. He pretty much changed everything in the game. And some of it is subtle, some of it is not so subtle, and there's a lot of things that are totally broken. Um, it, I, I don't know. I, I think that was the second game I've played with it, and I was not impressed at all. <laughs> Group formed. Oh, connect to Raptor Jesus through the proxy. That's dangerous. I'm also connected to Mycin through the proxy. I did not. I did not kick. Maybe your connection booted you. Group disbanded. If Raptor can hit without the proxy, he can get in here. Well, Mycin's on the proxy too. Mm. Being on the proxy makes me more nervous than it should. Mycin. It's like MSG is also on the proxy. I'm not so worried about that, though, because he's in France. So I don't think that will be an issue. Group formed. Eh. I don't know. We can try it. Let's just launch. If it doesn't work, we will rehost it. Nothing wrong with a good rehost every now and again. Come on, Hassans. Exit up. Hello, black box covering the lower quarter of my screen. All right, let me get a factory in here and then I'll pop the window out. We'll get our strategic zoom back. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, we need, oh, good lord almighty, that is, that is a bad spot. Okay, bam. Alrighty then, so we got our factory. We've got a hydro way over there. We are ridiculously spread out for mass extractors, holy cow. I'm gonna have to drop all over the place to get mass extractors. This is a big map. <laughs> May have bitten off more than I can chew. All right, let's get engineers up. We're gonna have to go for a very aggressive air factory. Oh, how kind, there's a rock to help me out on my early build, so I'll have some mass. Thank you, whoever did that. Oh look, more rocks. Tell you what, that first engineer. Let's just go on an exploratory adventure to get some rocks here. Dink, dink. And then let's go get these guys. You know what? Should I do my naval staging? I think I'm going to do my naval staging over here. That sounds like a plan. Okay. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. We got off to such a good start. Apparently it was supposed to be doomed. Alright, you... I'm going to hit those rocks and then mass extractor and more rocks because rocks are fun. 
All right. And we're back. Fantastic. No disconnect. That's what we like to see. All right, so I'm going to assume that that is mine. Goodness gracious, that is a long ways to go for a single mass extractor. He's going to have to have his own transport. Is it worth it? Yes, it is, because every single drop of mass is precious. We're going to move him. And Hydro. Ah, lovely tree clumps. Brings back memories of Settens. We're going to assist Hydro. Move out of the way, Engineer. And we're going to do eight P Gens and an air factory. Fantastic. You're going to hit mass and a mex. Good dealio. Are those mine? Let's just assume that they are and send an engineer out. Sounds like a good plan. Bingo. All right, we're definitely gonna need transports. Lots of transports. Because this is a tremendous long, tremendously long distance to travel. Oh, how much more mass do I have? No more for a while, okay. So I'm just going to run with what I've got here. I overflowed just a teensy tiny little bit of mass right there, but hopefully everyone can forgive me. I didn't mean it, I swear. All right. Oh, I am so glad that I reset my game.prefs file because I just pressed the two keys that do um, that do instantaneous control K and I had my ACU selected. That would have been terrible. Why is that not built? Did I miss that? Oh well. We're going to get two transports up. One of them we're going to use to do a nasty drop. And the other one we're going to use to get all of our expansions online. All right, six engineers on board. We're going to go ahead with a T2 mass extractor upgrade. And then you, my good sir, are going to leave on your mission of ill will. Now the problem here is, well, I'm going to have to drop directly on his shore. Because if I drop there, I'm not going to be able to get units over. You know what? Screw that. Let's go all the way in. Let's go for broke. Let's go for the back player. Okay. And three loaded there. I can drop one, two, three. And we'll be good. Such a huge map. All right, let's build some more P gens. I'll have to see where that transport ends up. Okay. This is going to be a little bit slower paced game than I thought it would be. All right, Mr. Engie. All right, so that's orange. That is MSG. Maybe we should drop him. Yeah, let's do that. 
Let's Mantis Swarm the son of a gun. He's a strong player and we can remove him. Let's do that. <clears throat> I don't see any... Oh, there's the radar right there. He's going to know I'm here. You know what? That's okay. I'm also anticipating a T1 bomber. Okay, we need to get him. And we need to get him in just a minute. Alright, we now have a battle grouping. We're gonna get at least one mass extractor. This is totally worth it. That's probably the ACU coming. And that's why we're building point defense, my friends. We're gonna sucker punch him. Crap. All right, good deal. And run. Oh, crap. This is probably not going to pan out like I want it to, but you know what? That's okay. We're going to do an anti-air, then we're going to attempt to get a couple more factories online. That's right, get out of here. Okay, let's start with the Navy. Is this actually going to... Oh, freaking A. Overcharge. Crap. Crap. That's right. Get over aggressive, you. Got those two T1 point defense on you. Okay. All right, what are we doing now? We're getting air scouts out. And then we're getting eco up because we've got to do that kind of thing. Let's do those. We need to build here. Get that. We need to think about T2 power at some point because we're definitely going to need that. Let's go for the ACU upgrade. Well, I don't know. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, nope. Okay, we're going to go for the air factory upgrade. Because I have more devious plans with that. And then we are going to get a T2 engineer out. And then we're going to do three transports because reasons.
Okay. You're not going to be able to point defense creep because I have a lot of Medusas. I mean a lot of Medusas. Alright, let's see what he's got going on back here. We got our T2 engineer coming up. I'm going to build three P gens, or at least plan three P gens. Let's send some of these there. There we go, that'll alleviate our power situation, and we're going to park our ACU in the pond. Because that is always a freaking A. You know what? Let's stop there. We're gonna do this. Stupid tank. Alright, gunship, get over here. Gotta do your job. Wait, is that? That is a drone! Why do you have a drone? Alright, where's my scout? I need a scout. That was sneaky. That was very, very sneaky. Alright, gunship to the rescue, we will be fine. There he is. Can I not attack him? Don't tell me that's still broken. You're not getting my cyber engineer. That's still bugged. Freaking A. Alright, so we gotta build an anti-air. A couple of anti-air and drop them off. Alright, that is a wash. Oh, that's so frustrating. Uh, let's see. We're going to drop a group of engineers off over here. And just prepare for the eventuality that we have to do that. Okay, so stop that. Let's build a couple more T2 transports. And then we need to get a couple more T1. That is due to be fixed in the next patch. Um supposed to be fixed where that doesn't work anymore so all right let me build a uh, radar and a t1 anti-air radar and a t1 anti-air where did his drone go all right, go over there
Can we get away with one more mass extractor upgrade? I think we can. There goes his little drone. That's right, you better run. Okay. Another upgrade. Already got three, so I can actually probably start my RAS as soon as those two clear. And then we're going to do a sonar. We're going to upgrade it to T3 for the cloak. He's already got T2 Navy, so we're going to have to rush T2 ourselves to be any good here. And we're going to go ahead and rush these across. And stop building T2 transport right after that one. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. Cool beans. Okay. Oh, there were tanks back there. All right. I think we are good now. See, those are up finished upgrading. Let's go ahead and do resource allocation. Then we can think about other things. I'm not going to assist it. We're just going to leave it on 35 mass stall and do that kind of thing. He has more than enough frigates to take that. More than enough frigates just needs to go for it. Alright, you're gonna drop and go back and you guys are gonna stop production because I think you're fine, totally fine. And you guys are going to assist and you are going to ferry right here and all of you guys are going to go in that. Okay, so that one's finished. Let's go ahead and get those. I think we're good. Let's check in on the teammates. So we've got uh, Green, looks like he's pushing for T3 Air maybe. Maybe, just maybe. I hope so. Looks like we do have some torpedo bomber problems on the south side. Unfortunately, all I have is interceptors. Oh. Yeah, he has got that well in hand. No problem there. He's going to lose his naval factories. This is why you don't push up as UEF versus Cybern, because Cybern is going to have better tools to deny you with. Um, let's get our gunships that we've got and go kill this sonar, because we don't want that spying on our activities. Actually, I think we'll just keep our interceptors here because they will probably be more valuable. Let's go ahead and build a radar and a couple of anti-air. Okay. Now that we have a cruiser up, we'll be able to deny stuff that gets thrown at us and we've got two scouts so we can actually ping those across and see what kind of navy he has because if he doesn't have any navy or if he has very minimal navy then we should act oh crap he just went t3 ah dang it this is gonna be tough um mm. It's very strange. Why is there a T1 naval factory way out in the middle of nowhere? That's my question. Those are scouts. Alright, let's pull interceptors over. 
And once that goes down, we're going to go kill his build power. He's flying right past it, but I do have stealth. So I don't know that he saw it. That's pretty sketchy. All right, so we're just gonna leave that up there doing its own thing. In a minute, we're gonna have to get all of that together and start producing more stuff. Soon as our resource allocation finishes, which are 98%, 99, we're gonna go for three upgrades there and we're gonna dump T2 on our commander. And let's go with our gunships. He's already got a freaking T3 mass extractor. Tekken like a boss. Let's go ahead and move out with these. Just to see what's going. What are those? They destroyers? Cruisers? What do we got? problem is if he gets a single battle cruiser out we're gonna be in a world of hurt all right we got to go shut this down we can shut down the t3 factory we win and I think we have enough Oh no, there's ASF. Crap. That means there are soon to follow many, many torpedo bombers. We have four destroyers. We should be able to inflict a substantial amount of damage. Okay. Now we got to start thinking about T3 air. Let's do... Let's get these two. Let's do some land factories. Let's think about our own eco. I don't think we have eco nearly enough this game. Okay. Gonna launch some of our other stuff at him. We are hitting the battle cruiser some, so if it does get out before the factory's finished, it's going to be heavily damaged. There it is. Punch him up, folks. Punch him up. We're gonna lose one. Crap. But not another, so we're good. All right, fantastic, fantastic. And now we've got a lot of cruisers streaming in, so we should be fine. We'll be able to knock out a significant portion of his eco with this. Let's go ahead and upgrade those. Get out of here, ACU. Nobody wants you. All right. So we're going to send this destroyer and this cruiser to the north side. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Let's 
go ahead and get all that out there. Um, are you... You're the one. Okay, you have... Okay, we're gonna be good. Let's get up there. You guys are going to reclaim all of this mess. Because we need clear access to the air factory. What do we got here? Seraphim. Ah, that's okay, we can deal with a couple of Seraphim destroyers. With torpedoes, if nothing else. Raptor microwing like a madman there. Unfortunately, your Seraphim is just too weak. There goes the torps. Yup, yup. Gonna have a bunch of people on me at once now. Because that is the way it goes. Alright, we have plenty of coverage on that. Raptor pulling around the south side. What am I getting pinged for? Oh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. That means that there is a cruiser off my shore. We need to get some... Um, let's get a scout. And... Some torpedo bombers up. There is... Ah, screw you, Raptor. <laughs> really, dude. Really. Gonna do that to me. Why aren't you sending mercies after a cruiser? There is nothing about that that is ever going to work. All right, we got to get back down here to get rid of this navy before he gets reestablished. We killed off the mass extractor there. See, the funny thing about running Seraphim Navy, it typically can't use both of its guns either. And you're eventually going to catch up to it with torps. So, it will eventually die. It, it fights valiantly, I will grant that, but it is eventually going to die. Okay, where is our scout? And there's our T2. Okay, we need to build TMD. Why didn't I not think of that earlier? And... There we go. Get our one scout out. We can kill the cruiser with... Um, we can kill the cruiser with five torpedo bombers at once. As long as it hasn't vetted a great deal. Alright, we're protected now. And now we have problems. <clears throat> Okay, I think we're at least semi-good. Okay, everything is looking up now. Let's assist that. We're going to get some storages going down. You, my friend, need to go get some storage on him.
Storage is on all of those. Let's get storage is on you, and I hear an air battle somewhere. Oh, crud. That would be bricks, but we can get gunships, so it'll be okay. Oh, T2 transport. Come here. I need your stun. And you, T2 transport. I need your stun. Okay. You're going to attack him. You're going to attack him. And together, you are going to stun these sons of guns until they can't do anything. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. Let's attack you. And we're going to turn on the uh, shield breaker fire right there. Because that will do wonderful things. Stop it, Raptor. Stop it. You're not supposed to be a helpful teammate. Get out of here. Okay. What do we got here? Why is my stun not working? Do they not stun T3 units? And also, why... Okay. So I have three people to fight. That's cool. Alright. Get over there. Get over there. Did I lose my sonar? Nope, it's still there. Okay, we're good. Alright, this is just going to be a booger. That's all that's going to happen here. This is just going to be a booger. It's a scientific term for the cluster that this is. Okay, so we lost a mech here. Let's go ahead and hit that. We need to reclaim... We need to jump out here and get him. We're still behind on eco. Let's go for a T3 upgrade on the ACU because that could come in handy later. We were in the middle of queuing you. We've got to kill somebody is what it boils down to here because this is not sustainable in the slightest. It just is not. Right, you need to stay there. You need to come this way. We're actually going to go harass his shoreline because we need to just kill some of this eco. Otherwise, we're we're going to be screwed. Okay. Got a couple of strats over there. So helpful, helpful teammate building those. Let's get that up. Let's get that up. All of you assist him when you're done. We need to reclaim that. And then start building some more things. And that needs to be straight. My inner OCD is pleased. Okay. Oh, good lord. Is that really T3 subs? Nope, it's cruisers. Okay, good. Dive in, my pretties. Back up, cruisers. You need to be forward on this. Okay. Get out of here, Raptor. You guys. You're gonna kill all that. Where's all my engineers? Oh, they're coming. All right, good, good, good. Good, good, good. gunships and all of my navy just disintegrates instantaneously come on cruisers do your work there we go 
And that's why we overbuilt cruisers. See, they do work sometimes. Okay. problem is he is 100% destroyers and I am trying to defend against air as well blue is in air control we have all of these either hardcore t3 air or navy and we have one navy on the other side Ooh, this does not look good Hassan's is getting teleporter. There's some comfort to be had there. Alright, let's stop the gunships. We've got a fair few, but no way to use them really. And then we are going to start up T3 air. There is nothing else that we can do. Alright. Cut the cruisers, because if I can't hold the Navy. Oh, that will be beautiful. That will be beautiful. <clears throat> if you can kill him... The key here is going to be to kill him without dying. That is what I'm not sure can happen. And I do not have the eco to sustain this. That is a problem. Um. Yeah, something's going to have to give here. Let's just bite the bullet and upgrade. Do I want to abandon this? You know what? I am. Screw it. Alright, reclaim my pretties. And of course I'm power stalling. Oh yeah, because I lost all those T2 gens earlier. Fantastic. Alright, you're coming on shore. We gotta build some T3P gens. We're gonna deal with the power stall till then. Did that finish? Nope. Hooray! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, who was that? Oh, Hassens. Okay. Hello, my name is Hassens. Um, yeah, this is all going to go poof, because you can't just give. It doesn't work that way. So we just traded air players, basically. Fantastic. Utterly fantastic. Can I drop that? Yes, I can. I'm going to go drop that. 
Okay, we need a T3 P gen, several T3 P gens. I already have a head start on T3 mass extractors. We need, or not T3 mass extractors, T3 ASF. We need to kill all of those sons of guns. And then we need to start our own naval denial force because otherwise we are going to get hurt very, very badly. Who else just died? MSG. Was he one of ours? MSG. How did he die? No, that was the fifth. What? Oh, strats. Derp. Derp. I'm staring right at it. Goodness gracious. Brink, you need to go to bed. You need to go to sleep. Do something, because you are off your rocker today. Well, things do not look quite so bad as they did just a couple of minutes ago, actually. We are going to build T2 subs, because we can. Um, and that's what we're going to use to carry out our plans for total map domination. Uh, you, my friend, are going to go down here around the cruisers and establish a base of operations. Strat from this far, lol. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did not have that straight in my head because um, I was thinking that he had all of our air, but it was actually him and he died and I'm just like, oh, well, all of our air went with him. But in reality, no, it didn't because, yeah. Okay, so I've got engineers coming in here. We're going to reclaim like bosses here. Drop right there. There we go. And now assist that. Okay. Let's build a nuke. Actually, let's build two nukes and walk over here when we do it. So we're going to build one of those. And then one of those. And then two of those. And then we're going to walk over here. And build... Rough terrain. Stop. There we go. Strategic launch detected. Some more of those. Oh, my team already has some nukes. How nice. Okay. Give me one sec. Okay, we can give you one second. Let's get our uh, horde of T2 subs started out towards the middle of the ocean. All right. Well. That, that is a headache-inducing game. Yes. I think this map is a little bit too big. Let's read back through the comments. Pretty sure... Oh, for the Equilibrium mod. Pretty sure he changed a bunch of numbers for the sole reason of having them end with 0 or 5 so that they're pretty. Yes. That is entirely true of Ithalus's mod. Like, that was his stated reason for multiple balance changes was to make the numbers pretty. And, like, when that's your... When that's your goal for balancing a game is to make the numbers look pretty, you're doing something wrong. Let's see. T3 is not stunned. Yeah, I, I think it may just be only T2 and T1. Even score, three cruisers for three gunships. And yeah, this map is actually too big for naval action. I did not anticipate that when we jumped into it. Um, let's actually jump over while we're waiting for this one second return. Um, let's go to, let's see, uh, Forged Alliance Forever. FA Forever. Where is it? Unit DB, I think, is the URL. Page not found. Units database. FAF units DB. Okay, whatever. Um, what are we looking at here? T3 gunships. Oh, we're unpaused. I'm going to look at it on the other screen here. 
Um, let's see. The UEF T3 gunships cost a grand total of 1,260 mass apiece. And the Cybran cruisers cost 2,000 mass apiece. So, yes, the broadswords actually do come out to be more mass efficient. Losing three and three. And the bigger the gunship swarm is, the more lethal it is. Especially versus cruisers. Unless it's Seraphim cruisers. Uh, for a live cast, do you think you will do a Phantom X game? I actually almost did one today. I thought about it really, really hard. And I didn't. Um, but I have nothing against playing a Phantom X next week. That is definitely something to consider. This game, as a whole, has turned out to be way more long and drawn out than I thought it would. Basically the same as every other endeavor that I've had today. <clears throat> I actually was having a nasty little uh, crash thing happening with FAF because... Um, not crash. My sound was not working. That's what it was. And it was really ticking me off. And it took me most of the afternoon to fix it and put me behind on casts and everything else. So, yay, life. Always getting in the way of things and stuff and whatever. We need to reclaim all of that junk. <clears throat> and we're going to reclaim all of this junk as well. Because everyone likes a little bit more mass sometimes. <clears throat> I have been binge watching Ghost in a Shell for like the last week. And it has been glorious. I got a lot of T2 gunships. Let's throw them away on something. Because that sounds like fun. For that matter, we need to find out what Raptor is doing. We're going to hold the pass, folks. Where is my move order queued to? There it is, right there. Alright, you need to be down here. Alright. Do, 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 do. And we're going to stop T3 air production. We're going to stop land production here. We're going to stop that. To get our power back in check, let's go ahead and do a mass extractor there. Coolio. I don't know. My first instinct is typically not to eco whore, and it probably should be. Because it seems like people who eco whore, especially on the bigger maps, tend to do a little bit better. Which makes sense. It really does. But it's still frustrating as I'll get out. When you do not eco hard enough and then other things run away from you. Well, hello there, gunships. Such nice and shiny things. Sure would be a shame if something happened to you. Strategic launch detected. Alright. Run away, run away, run away right now. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Got a whole nother empty location there. So much mass to reclaim. Look at that string of T2 subs. Very, very soon now we will be able to just swoop in and kill everything over there. Except for engineers. That was a severe oversight. Okay, we need to get that down. And we can do that one as well, actually. We're doing reasonably well on our reclaim. Let's do all assist there. And find one standing still and assist him instead. And then see how hard we stall. We actually don't. So that will be fine. Okay. That works.
Totally forgot about my gunships that were down there. Alright. Move. Alright, where are you at? Where are you at? There you are. I'm going to self-sacrifice as bait for Architect to get in behind. There we go. Come down. And perfect fall in behind. There we go. Utter oblivion is met this day. And no more air. The GG has been thrown. How are we doing on our nuke load times? Very, very well, actually. Let's go see if we can kill his navy. I have a sneaking suspicion that we can. Ha! I spy a donut! <laughs> Let's just assist the donut. Do I know of any graphics mods for FAF? Actually, FAF already incorporates quite a few graphic mods. Um, if you look at the Steam version of Supreme Commander and the version of Supreme Commander that we play, the differences are astounding as far as the texture details and the effects. You should totally go turn on the Steam version just to see what it looks like because this game looks far and way better because I did incorporate three or four um, of the better texture packs and all that kind of stuff. What is that? Is that a T3 sub? I think it is a T3 sub. All right, there are enough units on the map at this point that my UI is actually struggling to issue orders. Stop it. You're not supposed to stick. Move where I tell you to. Move. Whatever. You can just sit there. There was the kaboom. Apparently the donut has done its job. Where is the donut? Right in the middle of the nuclear fire. There he is. <laughs> Oh, man. So that just leaves poor old Raptor Jesus. Where is he? I do not know. But we are about to nuke him. One way or another. Strategic launch detected. So many cruisers. You know what? That's his ACU. We're just attacking it. No, it's not either. That's a T3. That is a T3 engineer. Get out of here, T3 engineer. Nobody wants you. And there goes Raptor. <laughs> Oh, he was building Lenny's. Well, that's an acceptable thing to be doing with your time. All right, GG, mini cheeses were made that day. Oh, man. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. That went on a little bit longer than usual. That was a very, someone, uh, someone, I can't remember what his FAF name is, but someone sent me the one versus one replay that I had at the beginning Strictly is an example of air versus navy, and I would strongly encourage you if you're just tuning into the stream now to rewind and watch that segment because that was a really intriguing game between Zlow and Bloodier. Other than that, though, I am out of here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and putting up with me in this incredibly long game. And uh, do take a look at the channel page because there is a new banner up there with a schedule that is going into effect next week 
Lots of cool content. I hope we'll see you guys over there. All right. I am out of here. Adios.